This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Hope you're enjoying this January 27th. It is a Thursday. It is a game day. We have plenty to talk about wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside my opponent this weekend, at least as it pertains to our longtime favorite NFL teams, Jason Shepard. <gasps> The, the word you use, though, long time. Come on now. I mean, look, for one of us, it's been a long time fan. <laughs> How long have you been a Bengals fan? I have been a Bengals <laughs> fan for the better part of, of 26 months. Five years. <laughs> 25 years. Jason, I just had very few reasons to let people know about my that, Bengal okay, fandom. That is a fair point. Here's my other question <laughs> When did you buy that shirt? When did I buy this Bengals shirt? That polo? specific shirt. I bought it this summer. <laughs> Okay. I got no, on the I Joe, get I got I got, on the no, Joe Burrow train last I year, it. and I was like, you know what? I need to be more, like, outspoken of my fandom for the Bengals. Now, did I well, think now- it was going to result in an <laughs> AFC championship game experience? Uh, experience? No. But I thought well, maybe this is the year they finally get back to the playoffs and probably lose another playoff game. But they won. And and if and correct me if I'm wrong, the reason that you're a Bengals fan is because you didn't have a team and you said, I'm going to pick the worst team and that's going to be my team and I'm going to live or die with them. Correct. That's the reason why. That is exactly why I chose the Bengals. Everybody in Utah. And 31 because- years later, it pays off. Yes. <laughs> Because Utah does not have a professional football team. True. It is true. Everyone's like, oh, 49ers, Cowboys, Packers. Broncos, because nope. we got force-fed Bronco games for decades. I chose the Bungles, as Chris Berman had termed them. All right, tomorrow time. you and I are going Jersey Day. Yeah. You're, you're going to wear, is it a Burrow jersey? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you've got Burrow. Uh, I'm going to wear my <laughs> Mahomes jersey. Uh, we're going to try and keep it civil tomorrow. Could get ugly. Um, you're going to have to tune in to find out. <laughs> I feel like I win either way because uh, BYU guys are on the Kansas City side, right? It's true. It's all yeah. good. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation. Actually, you know, let's get to the show line before we get to the headlines, Jason. I'm all out of sorts because you got me in a, a tizzy about the Bengals, You're man. trying to exa- You're remember exactly fa- when you became fandom. a Bengals fan. <laughs> Today we break down BYU's matchup with Santa Clara. And are we sleeping on the Broncos? Because a lot of people think this is going to be a really close game. ESPN women's hoops bracketologist Charlie Cream will join us and explain why he thinks BYU is currently a three seed in their version of March Madness and if they can climb any higher. I don't think their game is going to be close tonight, Jason. Plus, freshman gymnast Eliza Millar on set to discuss her first few outstanding meets for BYU gymnastics. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. You just mentioned it, men's basketball on the road at Santa Clara tonight facing the Broncos. BYU has not played at the Levy Center since 2018. Radio pregame coverage with yours truly begins at 10 Eastern time tonight on BYU Radio. Tip-off on BYU Radio and ESPNU will be at 11 Eastern. It's going to be a late one. It was not a good memory the last time BYU played at the Levy Center, Jason. So hopefully BYU can turn that thing around. I have been outside the Levy Center multiple times over the last two years with women's soccer. Still never been inside. Well, there you go. Number 16 BYU women's basketball also taking on Santa Clara, but in the Marriott Center tonight. The Cougars coming off a home and road sweep of San Diego. Santa Clara is currently third in the West Coast Conference. They're a sneaky team, but again, this is a home game for BYU. The Cougars will be heavily favored. BYU currently number 10 in the country in scoring margin beating teams by almost 19 points a game you can watch it all unfold live on byu tv the app at 9 p.m eastern time pro football focus or pff for all you hipsters uh, ranks the top returning offensive linemen two cougars make the list blake freeland was ranked the seventh best returning offensive tackle and Clark Barrington is the 10th best returning interior lineman. If you have a conversation with anybody on the BYU football team about Blake Freeland, it takes about one second for the term freak to come up. (laughs) He's doing some really special things. Great offensive line coming back. Number eight, BYU men's volleyball hosting the Trojans of Mount Olive tonight. 
9 p.m. Eastern, live on BYU TV. The Cougars hold a 2-0 all-time record with a two-match series win back in 2020. This is a smaller school out of Mount Olive, North Carolina. BYU played much better against UC Irvine, sweeping the Anteaters. I will be on the call. Jerem Jordan has graciously extended me an invitation to step in for him and call his beloved BYU men's volleyball matches with Steve Vail and Kiki Solano. I'm looking forward to it tonight. I'm also glad that you mentioned the location of Mount Olive. I had no clue where it was at. I assume probably somewhere in California, complete up opposite end of the country. Yeah, tiny school in the Conference Carolinas. Okay. And they're picked to win that conference. All right. Michaela Clough, formerly Michaela Coulihan, signing a two-year contract with the Orlando Pride of the NWSL. Kayla was drafted 14th by Orlando back in 2021, but she decided to come back to BYU this past season. The Pride will begin their preseason on February 1st. BYU men's lacrosse ranked number one in the preseason in club NCAA lacrosse rankings after winning the MCLA club national title. The season begins on February 10th at Boise State. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Don't sleep on the Broncos of Santa Clara. Jason, the folks in Las Vegas have this game as a three-point projection, giving the odds to BYU, I'll say, but ESPN's Basketball Power Index says 53% chance that Santa Clara beats BYU at the Levy Center. Ken Palm has BYU also as a three-point favorite with a 61% chance to win. Jason, metrics are really close. Yes. I didn't think that it would be this close. Right. But it is. Here we are. And this all ties into what Ken Pomeroy said earlier in the week, that BYU only has a 55% chance of winning both at Santa Clara and at Pacific. That to still which seems so low to I me. I know. It seems low. I, but is it? Is it? Are we sleeping on Santa Clara? Should we be more concerned about what BYU faces tonight? All right. L before we get to the, the meat of this discussion, let's get to BYU's resume as of today. So let's get a BYU resume update. Net coming in at number 28, uh, down four. That That's because... San Diego State got absolutely obliterated by Utah yes. State last night, which I'm totally okay with. Yes, Ken Palm there at 23. Team rankings, 81.8% chance of making the tournament. Bracket matrix, uh, a seven seed, 7.07 .07 is what it says. Uh, quad one, they're four and one on those games. Quad two, which this game is tonight, by the way. Okay. Uh, the Cougars are four and three, and then quad three and four games, uh, the Cougars are seven and oh. Yeah. So now let's compare that, because this will help with the discussion. Okay. Let's compare that with Santa Clara's resume. The net, 85. Pretty so, good. So, but we're still comparing a net 28 versus a net 85. Ken Palm, 83. Okay. We're comparing a 23 to an 83. In quad one games where BYU is four and one, the Broncos are 0 and three. Okay? In quad two games, they're one and two. And then quad three and four games, they're 11 and two. So now that we have that information, Yes, I am very surprised that BYU is not, certainly the BPI, that's the one I think that surprises me the most, along with the 55% that they, they sweep these two this week. That seems very, very low to me. I honestly don't have that big of an issue with the, the minus three that Vegas has in terms of the odds for tonight. Okay. You're going on the road, I get it. Let's also not make the mistake of sweeping Santa Clara under the rug. This is probably one of their better teams in the last couple of years. They're a very good shooting team. They're top 30 from both the field and from three in shooting. So they are a good team. But I'm going to go old school and say the team that has the better metrics, mm -hmm. the team that has the better record is going to win the game. And I think that should hold more weight than maybe it is right now. Does it matter that it's on the road and that BYU sure lost does. the last time they played there? Okay, that was that was four years ago. I know, not a Mark Pope team. It was four years ago. They haven't even played this team in two years. They didn't play last year. The last matchup was February of 2020. So this is not a team that they have faced recently. Look, I'm not saying that Santa Clara cannot beat BYU. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm, I'm going in with much more confidence in BYU than it seems like uh, some people are. And that surprises me a little bit. Okay. Well, let me counteract with this. 
Santa Clara has played the majority of their season without their best player, Jason, Josip Frankich. And guess who's back for the Broncos? He back. Josip Frankich, who was a teammate of Caleb Lohner and Fusini Traore at uh, Wasatch Academy. How about that? He ended up with Herb Sendek in Santa Clara. He's their best player. He's back and he's healthy. And he joins one of the best scorers in the country in Jalen Williams. And they're on their home floor. So I think about that little fact and I'm like, okay, yeah, Santa Clara is probably going to be a better team. Then I look at the net rankings and I look at some of the games that I thought BYU shouldn't have lost. I'm taking Utah Valley out of the equation because that was a totally deflating scenario with Gavin Baxter going down with another season-ending injury. The bench just was not right. They were not mentally right after that. And they had four players who were playing with the flu. (laughs) Okay? So, uh, again, I, I will take that one out of the equation. But the Vanderbilt game feels very similar to me. And I feel like a very similar team to what Santa Clara is going to roll out. Vanderbilt in the net right now, Jason. Number 90. Mm, okay. Santa Clara, 85. Also, Vanderbilt 2-5 and five in quad one games. 0-2 oh in quad two. They've not been great against the better teams. But Vanderbilt on a neutral court beat BYU head-to-head. And they've got an elite scorer in Scottie Pippen Jr., Jalen Williams is not as good as Scottie Pippen. He's Jr., really good, though. But he's really yes, good. He's very good. And now he has Josef Frankich, and they're playing on their home floor. So while on the surface we look at the record and the metrics, it's like, ah, yeah, BYU should win this game. The team that BYU is playing tonight is not the team that has been together for a majority of the season. I think Santa Clara is going to get better from here on out, and that's why I think it's so close in the projections. Look, and again, I, I, I don't want to – Make it seem like I'm saying that they have that BYU is guaranteed to win this game. They're going to have to play well. But here's the one thing that I like. We talk. I mentioned how how good of a shooting team they are. Well, BYU when BYU struggles, it's because of their offense, not their defense. Sure. Their defense has traveled. Their defense. Now you can take the Gonzaga game out of the equation because they're on another level, being able to score whenever they want. Nobody's defense travels against Gonzaga. But but BYU defensively is a very good defensive team, and so that's uh, that I think is going to be there. I think that helps slow down some of those shooting numbers that we've seen from Santa Clara. Again, when when BYU has struggled, it's because the offense has struggled. I, I feel confident that the defense is going to to do enough tonight that that the dumb, the numbers that we're seeing from Santa Clara hopefully come down a little bit. Again, it's not going to be an easy game. Anytime you go on the road, it's a difficult if it's difficult matchup. I just think BYU should be favored by more by the metrics than what they are right now. Yeah, and if you're looking at the very very detailed metrics of Ken Pomeroy and you want to quantify BYU's defense and how good it is, They're a top 20 team in the country in defending the three-point line, and that's across all gyms they've played in this year. And their adjusted defensive efficiency is also top 25 right now, Jason. So, like, I get it. That's probably why BYU is favored to win on the road. Typically, a home court is worth, like, three points. So if you played at a neutral site, BYU would be, like, a six-point favorite or a seven-point favorite, and they'll probably be, like, a ten-point favorite against Santa Clara if they were to play that game in the Marriott Center. So uh, the three points, it feels close, but I get it. I I get it. I'm not worried because of what you brought up. So you can call it not sleeping on the, uh, the Broncos or whatever. I don't feel like, oh, man, I'm really freaking out about tonight's game. It's not like I felt when BYU was going into the San Francisco game on the road, right, where BYU was a four-point underdog. They're still a favorite, and they play defense at an elite level. They rebound. If BYU makes some shots, yeah, it boils down to the offense. It really does. If, if they are a little bit better than they have been on average, then they'll probably win this game by 10 or 12. You know, so, it, yeah, it kind of feels like it's going to come down to how good is BYU's offense on the road against Santa Clara because I think the defense, they'll show up. That's what they do every game. The effort is always there. Look, maybe tomorrow when we're on the show, we're going to be looking back and talking about a Santa Clara win over BYU. 
I don't expect that to happen. I'm not going in thinking that BYU is going to lose this game. Everything tells me BYU should win this game. So I'm going into that. I, I'm, just, I'm just a little surprised that things from the outside looking in seem to be closer sure. than, than what I'm seeing. Okay. Well, I guess we shouldn't be surprised if indeed it is a close game tonight. Because Santa Clara is really good, and they're getting better with the uh, the return of some of their stars. Our question of the day, what level of concern do you have for BYU tonight at Santa Clara? Jason and I have laid out what we feel about the game, why we think it should be closer or not closer. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. Jackson Kazir on Instagram adds, pretty concerned. BYU seems to lose one or two road games against lesser competition in conference every season, and Santa Clara is decent. A loss wouldn't ruin BYU season, but it would make things interesting. Hashtag BYUSN. That's a great point. BYU lost with Mark Pope as the head coach at Pepperdine just a year ago. A team that was a six seed in the NCAA tournament, Jason. There typically is like one of these games, granted it's a quad two game, that BYU drops in conference. Is this the year that the Cougars can avoid that? Because this kind of feels like that type of game for BYU. Well, stay up late to find out. It's a late one tonight from Santa Clara, California. All right, coming up. Do BYU fans have a reason to worry about the future of Mark Pope in Provo? Oh, boy. Please, no. And ESPN's Charlie Cream joins us to discuss why this year's BYU women's basketball team is not just a sure thing in a tournament, but a real contender. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this or this, and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 16th ranked women's basketball hosting the Santa Clara Broncos tonight at the Marriott Center. You can catch the game live on the BYU TV app at 9 Eastern. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jason Shepard. It is our pleasure now to welcome in the man who controls women's college basketball bracketology for ESPN. His name is Charlie Cream, returning to the program. Good morning, Charlie. Great to talk with you. Oh, good to be back with you guys. Yes, and good morning to you. It's fantastic to see BYU on that three-seed line as well. Not going to lie, the Cougars have worked hard to get there, but not always is a winning team going to climb as fast as they have. So why are the metrics, the net basketball rankings and whatnot, in favor of BYU right now so that they are on the three-seed line already? 
I think the big thing with seeding uh, and net rankings and and go, going back years and before we had the net, it's the schedule. You got it. You have to play a good schedule in the non-conference, especially if you're in a league like the WCC that doesn't have a ton of depth to it. You're not going to get a lot of tournament-worthy teams in your conference season, so you have to go out and schedule. And BYU has done that this year. And then you have to produce against that schedule. BYU has also done that. You put those two things together, and then teams outside the power five or six conferences have a chance to make some noise, to get a higher seed, to let the metrics sort of speak for themselves. And, and that's happened this season. It's all, kind of all come together perfectly for BYU. But it, it comes down to who you play and beating who you play. And BYU's done really well on both fronts. Well, and I think that's something that Jeff Judkins has done a great job of, not just recently where there does seem to be much more emphasis on strength of schedule. He has always been a guy that's been willing to go and schedule tough teams early. But to your point, this is the year that not only do you get the really tough schedule, but you have the results to back it up and and that's that's something that could propel this team to a quite honestly a really special year absolutely because not only does it put them in position for a higher seed which is special it's super special if it becomes high enough as to where i project them to be right now inside those top 16 teams or a top four seed and get to host a couple of games in the first couple of rounds that's super special that's something that every program really shoots for at the beginning of the season. If it's not a national championship goal that they're talking about, kind of next level stuff is, hey, can we get a top four seed and host a couple of games? So just in that respect alone, we're looking at the possibility of, of this being kind of a special march. But also going out there and playing those teams prepares you for when you do get into the tournament, because that's all you're going to be playing outside of probably the first round. That's all you're going to be playing the rest of the way is teams like BYU scheduled earlier in the year, teams like Washington State or Arizona State or Oklahoma. So they're ready. Not, so not only did it reward them with a good seed, but they're ready to actually do some damage in the tournament as well. Charlie Cream of ESPN Women's College Basketball, the bracketologist, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We had an inkling of what this BYU team was capable of last year, taking a very good Arizona team that went to the national championship game down to the wire in the second round. So, Charlie, having seen that, is this surprising at all to you to see what BYU has done because they brought everybody back? Well, it's not entirely surprising. I mean, I did have them projected as a, a easy tournament team as the favorite in the WCC and, and really thought that they would be a team, to, you know, to kind of keep an eye on as a, as a team that could get to a second weekend in the tournament, but keeping an eye on it and then being a favorite, which is kind of where they put themselves in position to be now is are two different things. I didn't see three seed on January 27th. I saw, you know, as I probably projected them in the beginning of the season, something like a six seed. So this is a step up from where I, I thought they'd be. And I think a lot of people as well. I don't think they were projected to be deep into the top 25 like they are in the AP rankings. And I, I certainly didn't think that as we're heading into February that we'd be talking about them possibly hosting those first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. Charlie, we've spent a lot of time talking about the strength of schedule and just who BYU has played and beaten what are the metrics telling you uh, is, is BYU's best win? Wh which, which victory is helping the Cougars out the most at this point? Gosh, that's a good question because it's more of a collection with them. But I th I'd say Utah at this point because Utah's net raking is way up there as well. Uh, Arizona State's kind of uh, fluttering on the bubble just on the outside right now. But, but the way I look at it, and I, and, and, I, and I hope some of the committee members look at it, is, you know, we get it, we have a collection of teams that we're analyzing. And how did you perform as, as one of those teams against other tournament-worthy or quality teams? Doesn't necessarily mean teams that are, that are definitely in the tournament, but just teams that are worthy of consideration. What's your record against those teams? And, and in BYU's case, they have about four or five of those wins and they and one of and the, and the best team they played oklahoma they, they went to overtime against and that was boy that was a fantastic yes, game. It was. Just as, as an aside wow that was a great game uh, so that's the way that's the way i look at it. i think that's the way some of the committee members look at it as well because what you're what you're doing is trying to put the best teams in the tournament in the best positions based on their their resumes 
And what, what's what a better way to, to view a team than how they do against teams that are actually also would be in the tournament or would be considered in the tournament. So that's the way I, I kind of look at it. And when, when you take all these other pieces to the puzzle together, but when it comes right down to it, how did you play against tournament caliber teams? And the Utah, I, I'll, I'll point to that one is probably the best win. But with with BYU, it's it's more of a collective against uh, what was a good non conference schedule that included a lot of those teams. He is Charlie Cream. He is a bracketology rock star for ESPN, discussing BYU women's <laughs> basketball right now. And when you look at what BYU is right now, a three seed, and and again, this is a fantastic scenario for Jeff Judkins and his squad. But based on what they have left on the schedule, a couple of tougher games against Gonzaga, but not much else on paper. How high or how much higher can BYU realistically climb? I think three is might be the ceiling. Two would be, would need some help. Um, it, it's kind of a, it's a double-edged sword, right? BYU doesn't have a lot of losses left on, on its schedule. Maybe, you know, with the possibility of maybe losing one of those games to Gonzaga, maybe losing a game in the WCC tournament. However, they don't have a lot of resume building games in there either. So the record is going to be fantastic and they're not going to lose ground necessarily, but gaining ground is going to be hard because all the teams in front of them where they could lose are also playing other games where when they win them, they're, they're beefing up their resume. So kind of pushing past uh, like for right now, I, I have BYU as a three seed, but I have them as the f- last three seed, so number 12 overall. Sure. So they'd have to, to get to the two line, they have to push through three other four, really four other teams. And those four other teams almost on a nightly basis now, or, or certainly on a weekly basis are playing resume building type games. So even a loss can be counteracted by a win. And, and usually a win, the, the value of a win is better than or, or weighs more than what a loss does to you. So those teams just have a better chance of either maintaining or improving their position. So it's going to be tough for BYU to kind of crack any higher, but, it, but with the right help and with enough losses in, in front of them, it, a two seed isn't impossible. Charlie, last thing, and let's take this from just BYU and expand it out to the West Coast Conference. On the men's side, we're talking about the possibility that maybe the WCC is a four-bid league. On the women's side of things, what's the chance that uh, the West Coast Conference is a multi-bid league? I think it's decent. I mean, remember, we're talking about there's there's 68 teams in the field this year, which is new. So there's, there's four more at-large spots up for grabs. And... Uh, if it's BYU and Gonzaga, you know, let, let's play it out to where they both make the WCC tournament championship game. And Gonzaga doesn't doesn't lose it. Probably would help the conference a little bit more if Gonzaga could get one of those games against BYU. Yeah, it might it might hurt BYU's seed ultimately. But to be honest, if they're a three or a four, they're still hosting games. They're still in, in good position to do some damage in the tournament. But it also benefits. Gonzaga's chance of, of getting into the field. Cause right now I have Gonzaga right there on the bubble. What's also benefiting the, the chances of, a, of the WCC being a multi-bid league is that some of the middle of the pack or, or even, you know, lower end of the sec, for instance, and the ACC aren't playing particularly well teams like Texas A&M and Kentucky and the sec, who we all thought were going to be easy tournament teams. No problem. They're really struggling. So with four more spots available to at-large teams and some of the larger conferences maybe not having the depth of of bids that we thought they were going to get, opens up some opportunities. And Gonzaga would be a team that could walk into that opportunity. Charlie, we appreciate and respect so much what you do. We know how busy you are, traveling man, with everything that's going on. So thanks for taking some time with us. And I'm guessing that we'll probably be talking to you again before we get to the bracket if you're all right with that. I am very okay with that, but I look forward to it. It'd be great. Be, talking BYU hoops is, is a lot of fun. This team is a real enjoyable watch. Fantastic stuff. Charlie, thanks so much for your time. You got it, guys. Charlie Cream, ESPN women's college basketball bracketologist, rock star. He's right. They are a fun watch. Not, not just because they're winning a lot, but the style of basketball they play is fun to watch. Yeah, high-quality basketball. And even if you try and muck it up and slow it down and make it sloppy, they're still going to beat you by 20. Yeah. So... 
pick your poison. poison. I was about to pick say your pick poison. your poison. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up, we catch up with the newest BYU gymnast, Eliza Millar. BYU men's basketball headed for the toughest schedule in all the land. How you feeling about that Big 12 slate? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hey, who took Ben's hat? Introducing the all new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I'm Lisa Valentine Clark. And I'm Richie T. Every weekday morning on The Lisa Show, we share fun, inspirational, and relatable ways to make your life better. Think of us like uh, breakfast for your ear holes. Yeah, think of us like that. That's The Lisa Show, weekday mornings on BYU Radio. Start your day in a positive way. You don't want to start your day in a negative no, way. we got too much of that. Yeah, let's be positive. For you sure. positively want to start your day in a positive way. Absolutely. Nailed it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Eighth-ranked men's volleyball taking on the University of Mount Olive tonight at 9 Eastern. Where are they from again, North Carolina? Mount Olive, North Carolina. North Carolina, the there Trojans. we go. There we go, making the trek out west. Coverage begins uh, at 9 Eastern, as I mentioned, live on BYU TV in the app. I can't wait to call the match Steve Vale. I just hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> you will not screw it up. <laughs> he is Jason Shepard. I'm Spencer Linton. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on all of the major social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. This is a tweet yesterday that deserves the, the eyeball emoji. Uh, we all know how good of a basketball conference the Big 12 is. However, ESPN ran a graphic yesterday that lists the nine toughest schedules left in college hoops, and they are all Big 12 teams. <laughs> what was your reaction when you saw that? Uh, holy cow. I hope it's not this way when BYU gets into the conference in 2023 and 2024. Yeah, my first reaction was, oh my. That was, uh, that was quite, uh, quite the list. But look, I think Mark Pope said it best. He said, it's awesome, it's incredible, and it's absolutely terrifying. Here's what we need to ask Mark Pope. Is that graphic more terrifying than a duck? That's a great question. That's a question we need to ask. Hey. Okay, we're going to ask that I'm question. I'm going to text him right after the show. <laughs> okay. Ask him that. Does this scare you more than a duck? <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm legitimately going to send him that text message. Okay, uh, Jason, Sports Illustrated, speaking of Mark Pope, named BYU's head coach a candidate, and I hate this so much, to fill the Louisville head coaching job after Chris Mack and the Louisville Redbirds parted ways yesterday. Does this worry you at all? Well, sure it worries me. Anytime Mark Pope's name is brought up, I worry because he's so great and we want to keep him here at BYU forever. So anytime his name is mentioned, and there's even the slightest chance that somebody else is looking at him. Of course, I'm going to get worried. Yeah, th this is why it concerns me because Louisville is one of those programs that spares no expense. They want to win national championships. They expect to compete at the highest level. They have underachieved. 
they can throw a huge financial number at Mark Pope and give him crazy resources. And sometimes it, you just got to listen to it. So, yeah, I'm concerned because he's such a hot commodity. However, I do not think he will take it because of the Louisville-Kentucky rivalry. I you, think it, you think it's I think that's too strong factors into his mind. He's a Kentucky blue blood national champion wildcat. I don't think he would go to Louisville because of that. Okay. All right. Uh, PFF ranked Blake Freeland. We talked about this earlier. Uh, Blake Freeland as the seventh best returning offensive tackle and Clark Barrington as the 10th best interior lineman. Love it. Is there any other position deeper than the O-line returning next year? No, and that's saying something because BYU's got some great depth in a lot of the position groups, uh, specifically in the wide receiver room with Gunnar Romney and Puka Nakua both coming back, and they had Chase Roberts. And I mean, so, and, and they had Keanu Hill. But nothing's better than the offensive line right now, Jason. It is the offensive line that's the deepest, most experienced group on this BYU football. I agree with you. The one, though, that did come to my mind was linebacker. Um, that one, because, look, you had a lot of guys that played last year because of injuries, and now you've got all these guys back. You've got your okay. starters back. So your depth is even stronger. Sure. Keenan so, Peely, Max Tooley, yep. Wilgar, so, Ben so Bywater. The linebacker position is one that came to mind, but ultimately I agree with you. I think it is the offensive line. Uh, speaking of football, Jason, how many days until BYU takes on South Florida? Countdown to the Bulls. 2019. And we totally did that on the air. We, we did not discuss. <laughs> we did not discuss how we were going to do that. So we're like, <gasps> we have to look like how many syllables? How? Yeah, what are we enunciating here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 219 days away, BYU football Love it. opening the season in Tampa at South Florida. BYU had three of the top 10 uniform matchup games of the 2021 college football season, according to Uniform Authority. That's a thing that we do these days. We rate uniform combos. <laughs> Which was your favorite, Jason? Was it uh, BYU at Baylor, Utah at BYU, or BYU at USC? Look, the, the uniform is the byproduct of the victory here for me. It was whatever BYU was wearing when they beat Utah. Now, it turns out it was the Royal. We know that. Yeah. Like, so so for, for the answer, I'm going to go with that one. When, when BYU broke the streak yep. and beat Utah. So I'm going to go with the with the Royal. There's an emotional connection yes. to that, right? Yes. Yeah, I get that. Honestly, I think that as monumental as that win was, and just the tradition that was laced into the uniform combination against Utah, when I saw BYU walking down the tunnel at the Coliseum. That was pretty In cool. those uniforms with those helmets, like that, that quickly became my favorite uniform combination. That was a very, very cool scene. By the way, that picture that you're talking about yes. in the tunnel, that, honestly, that should be a poster. Chills, man. That was awesome. Chills. All right, last one. Between men's and women's hoops tonight, which individual will lead BYU in points? Shaley Gonzalez or the field? <laughs> Taking into account both the men's and the women's tonight. Oh, boy. You know, I'm going to take the field here. Maybe Paisley Harding or Alex Barcelo just go nuts tonight. Okay. I'm going to go with the field tonight. Oh, look, because you went with the field, I'm going to say Shaley. Although I was going to say Shaley anyway. It's, it's, She's on that kind of run right now. Yeah, well, she had 29 and 20 She's in her She's phenomenal. Last so, games. look, I will say Shaley Gonzalez tonight. Okay. We'll see who's right. Tonight. All right. All right, coming up, we give our double down predictions for a, as Jeremy would say, ball. Night. And gymnastics freshman sensation Eliza Millar will join us. Maybe she can help you balance out your life, Jason. Ooh. She's apparently pretty good at that. I like the uh, the little tie in there. Yeah. Balance. This is BYU Sports Nation. luxurious blanket getting cozy with family and friends a gift for everyone minky couture official luxury blanket of byu athletics 
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Men's basketball travels to Santa Clara tonight. Join me for radio pregame at 10 Eastern time. Then Greg Rubel and Mark Duran will have the call at 11 Eastern. Cougars and Broncos from Santa Clara. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. BYU Gymnastics number 21 in the country. They will host Utah State tomorrow night live on BYU TV to help us preview that match is the pride of Cincinnati, Ohio, oh Jason. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's a great omen that we have this young lady on the show. Eliza Millar <laughs> joins us straight out of Cincinnati. Go Bengals, Eliza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? You told us you weren't even a fan of the Bengals. <laughs> hey, it's great to have you with us in Studio B. Um Man, uh, with the Cincinnati excitement aside. <laughs> there's not really that much excitement about it. Here we are Come at BYU. <laughs> You're excelling. It's been a really exciting start to the season for BYU. Given everything that, that Guard Young lost, I mean, a lot of experience went yeah. away. Here you are. You're still scoring. You're a top 25 team. How has your BYU experience been thus far? Oh, It's just been amazing. Honestly, it's more than I could even ever imagine. I've been like a BYU fan since I was like a little girl. I have pictures of me like five years old with like a Y on my chest. And so sometimes I'm competing. And I'm like, whoa, there's like a Y on my sleeve. And it's just <laughs> been so amazing. So... So what is your best event? Give everybody an idea of what's your best event, what's your favorite, give, give us it all. So my best event is probably Beam. That's kind of why I got recruited to come here. Um, and I really do love Beam most of the time, as long as I'm not like landing on my side on the Beam. But you don't see that. Because <laughs> obviously when you're watching me in competition, it doesn't happen. But, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but I also love doing floor. That is so fun. Um, it's kind of different than Beam. Beam is more composed, but floor is just more energy and I kind of think of myself as an energetic person. I don't know if you, if you know me. I'm kind of happy and fun usually, so I feel like floor is an outlet for that. And we're beginning to pick up on that natural energy and <laughs> happiness. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're feeling it we in Studio it. B. Right now. Okay, I'm always fascinated by gymnasts in general, but especially those that enjoy the beam. It is not for everyone. <laughs> that is for sure. Not for every gymnast, for that matter. So where do you go mentally when you are up there and knowing that, okay, I'm going to do multiple flips and twists and spins. What is going through your mind when you were on the beam? So we do a lot of numbers. So like in practice, you guys don't see this, but we do it over and over and over again. So as I'm standing there, um, probably arms above my head, looking at the beam right before my first skill, um, I kind of thinking about what it feels like to do it right. Because I've done it so many times before. And so believe it or not, you know, you can imagine what it feels like to walk, right? Like get up, hopefully. So I can kind of imagine what it feels like to do a flip and do it right and land it really good. So... Right before I go, I'm kind of thinking about what it's going to feel to nail it. Because if I'm thinking about how it's going to go wrong, that's probably not the best way. Okay, so just what she explained there, Jason. Yes. This is why when I am calling gymnastics, I find myself having more like just fan moments than any other sport. Because it's so crazy <laughs> what you do. Just what you explain. Like, oh, I just didn't, didn't imagine myself you know, flipping and twisting and landing on this apparatus that's <laughs> all of, you know, like four inches wide. You know, and it's... Three, how, let's see, what's the technical term? How high is it in the air? 
The, gy- um, the gymnastics world likes meters. I think that you, I usually hear four feet, but with mats, it's a little. Oh, okay. So I'm like five foot tall, and when I stand there, like my hands go about here. Like I kind of know, because I do that so many times. I put my hands here and then hop up on the beam, so somewhere chest height. Jason, would you not Probably. be terrified? I, look, I'm terrified <laughs> watching other people do it, let alone being the one that would be asked <laughs> to do it. All right, so I want to ask you something along the same lines then. Are you the type of athlete that gets nervous then before competition? Do you have to calm yourself down? And if so, what do you do? Yeah, I definitely get nervous. I get, I feel, I feel the heart going. Um, I love music. I've honestly, ever since I've come here, music's been come a bigger part of like my competition. So my teammates all know I have like three songs I listen to over and over again um, to get myself all ready. But I feel like you can't really get the nerves to go away, but you can just kind of harness them into like use them the right way. So okay, what are the songs? Yeah, we need Is to know three? the playlist. Um, I'll tell you my favorite. <laughs> I so I love Flow Rida for some reason. Okay. Just, Gets me going. Um, club can't handle me. Okay. That one. <laughs> so if I have earbuds in, that's probably what I'm listening to. But <laughs> Jason, Look, I, do you have it on your phone yet, Jason? I have it on my phone. Oh it's, yeah. It's it is on my phone right now. <laughs> well, we love that. All right. I can't play it because we don't have the rights to play it. But I just am proving to you. <laughs> there it club is. can't handle me. Right that is, there. That is the one. See, there it is. Recognize Jason plays that when he goes to the gym. <laughs> it's on the gym playlist. In his, in his Kansas City Chiefs gear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Eliza Millar of BYU Gymnastics with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, you've made our day so much better oh, already. I, I hope you know this. Okay, uh, we've seen BYU make progress as a team in each of the three meets. And this was without a huge number of athletes available in the best of Utah meet. It slowly started to trickle back in with COVID protocols and health and safety and all that. But what's been the key besides getting more athletes back to getting better each meet um I think a lot of it has to do with trust because I feel like with a really young team like this it's kind of hard because I mean I'm a freshman so I have teammates that are older that have never seen me compete before right um so I feel like with each meet obviously we get more girls back and so that's really helped um but I always feel a lot of trust coming from the upperclassmen towards the younger girls which I think is really important so that when I have someone um my teammate Elise actually um, on beam she always comes out to me and the trust that she has in me just like makes me trust myself more so I think that each meet we're building that and so I'm so excited to see that just continue through the season as people get to know you and they see the last name I'm sure there are a lot of people that are watching or listening right now like Millar oh I wonder if she's related to Ryan Millar who I've obviously you know BYU men's volleyball is just a legend here um, what's are, are you related to him at all? Is there any connection to Ryan Millar at all? No, not at all. I had to look him up myself because I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's building her own legacy. Oh, yeah. That's right. That is right. Well played. Yeah, yeah she's good. building her own legacy yeah. here. And look at me. I can't play volleyball. I'm too short for that. <laughs> yeah, well, Ryan Millar <laughs> can't get on a beam. <laughs> I can promise yeah. you that and not uh, hurt himself significantly, much like us. Very much like us. Okay, Eliza, I do need to ask you about the upcoming meet against Utah State. Uh, the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference is like a sneaky good conference. So I don't mm-hmm. know if it gets enough publicity just because it's out west. And, you know, so much of the gymnastics world pays attention to the SEC and the Big 12 with Oklahoma and certainly the Pac-12 with Utah and the Red Rocks. But what is it like to compete against Utah State and Southern Utah, you know, basically on a weekly basis through the uh, core of the season? Yeah, so obviously I haven't had a ton of experience as a freshman, but um, I've actually been super impressed with what I'm seeing from them, and I think it's really good to have such a competitive conference. And even if it's sneaky, it still benefits us a lot. Um, And so I feel like as teams we can push each other, and then I feel like that great dynamic creates a really good competition. How do you feel about competing in the Smithfield House in front of your home fans? Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. So this is my this will be my first very meet. first. Um, yeah, and so I'm so excited to have some Cougar fans because I'm a really big Cougar fan. So yeah. having some people supporting me is really exciting. Well, yeah, and with what you said, you grew up a BYU fan your yeah. entire life, and it means everything to you. That's uh, what kind of emotions do you expect to to be going through with that experience? Oh, I don't know. I think. I feel like some sense of nostalgia might come, even though I haven't experienced it quite yet. But I've had such great experiences um, watching other athletes compete, and I've watched football for years. And like just knowing that other people will be watching me, I feel like it's just so surreal. Okay, so I saw several members of the gymnastics team at a lot of the home games. Mm-hmm. Were you part of that crew? Were you in there on the front row, front oh, yeah. two rows? Okay, okay. So how would you explain the dynamic of watching a football game and feeling nervous for the team compared to the nerves you feel when you compete? Are they similar or are they different? Um, 
well, I want my cougars to do well, so that's similar, but um, I think staying on a beam isn't quite the same as watching someone tackle each other, because I feel like they're honestly very different, but um, the, I don't know, the love for my team is still there from both occasions. Okay. Yeah. Before you go, we need to give you some BYU Sports Nation karma because you're new uh, and uh, a freshman. Here's how it works. When you come on the program, probably because you're already awesome, which you are, okay? but you take the karma and it allows you to compete and perform at just another level. Yeah. So you can go into the meet knowing confidently that it's going to be a great meet. So I'm flying through the air. I should think of you guys, right? If that helps. <laughs> if that helps. That helps. Okay, sweet. <laughs> if, if, that, if that distracts you, please don't. Okay. Because we want you to have the, the best score possible. Okay. <laughs> you can also share the karma with your teammates. If okay, yeah, you. I can spread it. Yes. You know, yeah. Like, whatever. If you want to be selfish, you can keep it all for yourself. It's up to you. Okay, so, yeah, sweet. You can make that decision. Eliza, thanks for hanging out with yeah, us. Yeah, of course. Thanks Sports for having Nation. me, guys. All right, coming up, a rise and shout out to the newest Coug in the pros. And we double down with our predictions for tonight's BYU men's basketball matchup at Santa Clara. Are you going to get super aggressive in this one, Jason? I hope you do. Let's, uh, let's come back and find out. This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Every day, I help an animal walk again. Boots was born with two very special front paws. To have the chance to save those beings that can't help themselves. When Tail was eight weeks old, he was ran over by a car. To give hope to hopelessness. Good. We're worried about Colby's future if he doesn't get help. They need help. They need help. If I can improve their life even just a little bit, I have to try. Every person and every animal should have a chance. Yeah. yeah. They give so much, and just to give back a little bit means so much to me. It almost feels like a miracle that somebody could give him a whole new lease on life. To have that many loving hearts come together at one time to help these animals is a stunning thing to witness. <laughs> there are just no words. It goes uh, beyond us, doesn't it? This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget, subscribe, rate, and review, please. Let's double down, shall we? Game night for BYU men's basketball at Santa Clara. You get two predictions. If we get one of those right, you get one point. You get both right. Get a bonus point and take home three points, Jason. The current standings are, well, Jerem's in the lead. He's, run, okay. he's running away with this. He's, uh, he's 29 to 16 over me. You and Dave in your limited roles have combined for five points. Yes, let's emphasize the fact that we're not on this to do this every time. That's why the, the, the number is so low, okay? <laughs> Start us off, Jason. All right, pick number one. Seneca Knight will score at least 14 points for his third game in a row. Ooh, that, off back that, to back with 14. That is aggressive. That is his BYU career high. Yes. It's not his career high as a as a collegiate athlete. I mean, he was averaging 17 at one yes. point. In his but career. at BYU, he's done it three times. Hey, you can go third game in a row? I'm going to go third game in a row. Ah, yes. Aggressive. Okay. Yes. All right, pick number two. BYU will have more, or excuse me, five or more players scoring in double digits tonight. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, you really are look, confident look, that BYU is going to beat Santa Clara. Look, what do I care? I have no chance of winning this, whether I get it right or wrong. 
mean, like this is zero pressure. Is it like you're channeling your inner Brian Logan? <laughs> bold I have predictions. no pressure to get these right. <laughs> these are bold predictions. All right, number one for me. BYU will hold Santa Clara to 74 points or fewer. Okay, say, well, why 74? They average 77, Jason, and they're playing at home. Okay, so I think this, I, I think BYU needs to do this to win the game, quite honestly. Because if I think Santa Clara gets to 77 against BYU, they're probably going to win the game, Jason. Defense got to step up. Got to step up. Number two, Husseini Traore will have at least 12 points and 10 rebounds. Not just a double-double, but he'll have 12 and 10. He averages 9 points and 8 rebounds. Fu's going to have a big game tonight against Santa Clara. All right, we do have Jerem's picks. Uh, pick number one for Jerem. Alex Barcelo is the game's leading score by four-plus points. Ooh, okay. okay so he thinks the BYU is going to shut down Jalen Williams and Joseph Frankic. Okay, and, uh, well, at least he didn't say 17 here. Pick two is BYU wins by seven or more points. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, no 17 plus. It's seven plus. They're three point favorites. Okay. Look you know, out. That's not crazy. He has the luxury to kind of just go out there and do his thing because he's got a massive lead. In yes. This. Again, he's like me, but on the opposite end. He's got such a lead. This is a heat check. Like he had a heat, okay. he yeah, had no, a heat good. check, good. if you will, the other day when he said Spencer will get one of his picks right. He, that was one of his picks that I would get one of my picks right, and he was right. <laughs> well, you should have come back with uh, get zero of his. Oh, whatever. Long season, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, running out of games. Our question of the day, what level of concern do you have for BYU men's basketball tonight against Santa Clara? And we should note that Jerem does not have concern because he's calling for the Cougars to win by seven or more. And Jason, you think they're going to have five or more players scoring double figures. So you're not exactly worried about sleeping on Santa Clara. Look, I, I, I'm going in confident in BYU tonight. Okay. At J Floyd 314 on Twitter says it's a conference road game. So you can't take anything for granted. Santa Clara is also better than we've come to think of them as being. I agree. Definitely can't take this game for granted, but I'm also not convinced they can score on BYU's defense. We'll see. BYU's defense has been so consistently good this season. We think it's going to come down to BYU's offense tonight. And for some reason, the BYU defense does not show up and Santa Clara scores. We're in yeah, for a long The night. BYU offense cannot go long stretches without scoring. And we've seen that in a couple of games. And, and, and again, it does. It will come down to offense tonight. Justin Sweeney on Twitter. Is Steve Nash coming back to play for them? Otherwise, I think BYU will be okay. And I do need to make a correction. I said 2018, the last time they played there, BYU lost. It was 2017 when they lost. Yeah, they, they won in 2018. They won in 2018. So the last time they were at Santa Clara. BYU all-time 17-1 and one against Santa Clara in West Coast Conference play. That should make you feel really good. Hoping it's 18-1 okay. and one after tonight. Our lead voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Brooks Dame on Twitter says, as worried as BYU playing the Pac-12 in football, so not worried at all. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Uh, that's never going to go away, is it? That, nor should it. <laughs> 2021 de facto Pac-12 South champs. <laughs> Today's rise and shout-outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Who gets it, Jason? Look, and Stuart Mandel even said it yesterday. It's not coming from us. Stuart Mandel said it yesterday, too. Uh, rise and shout-out. How about we give it to uh, Michaela Clough? Yes. Becoming the latest professional uh, Cougar. Yeah. Now with the NWSL and the Orlando Pride. Signing a two-year deal. She's with the under-23 United States national yes. women's team as well. Yep. How about a shout-out to Joe Burrow, Jason? You cool with that? <laughs> Hopefully a shout-out for handling the loss the right way. <laughs> oh, our thanks to today's guest, Charlie Cream and Eliza Millar. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. For Jason, I am Spencer. Shout-out to Guard Young. We'll see you tonight for BYU Women's Basketball and Volleyball. Go Cougs.